Welcome to the fourth lecture on computational geometry. Today we want to talk about linear programming or profit maximization. And we want to learn how we can model a linear program as a geometry problem and how we can solve it. In the very first part I will give you an introduction what linear programming is. So if you already know that then you might skip this part and immediately move on to the second one. And if you're listening to approximation algorithms then you've already seen this first part. So then again you don't have to watch it again, just move on to the second. Now for the rest of this part I'm quickly gonna change my clothes. Let's start with our small problem. You're the boss of a small company and you want to produce two products. For example, you want to produce some keyboards and you want to produce some mice. For producing x1 keyboards and x2 mice, your profit is 30 times the number of keyboards you produce and 50 times the number of mice. Of course, that would mean if you want to maximize the profits, then you want to create as many mice as possible. But it's not that easy because we have some additional constraints. We have three machines that create our components A, B and C that we need to produce the hardware. And we need those components in different quantities for our different types of hardware. So for example for a mouse we need, might need a scroll wheel but not for a keyboard. Also our machines take some time to create the component. So within one day for example we might be able to create 60 types of component C and 880 types of component A and for a mouse we need one type of component C and for the keyboard and mouse both we need one type of component B. That means we can create at most 60 mice and at most 150 keyboard plus mice together or we can create 880 of component A that means 4 times the number of keyboards plus 11 times the number of mice can be at most 880 during one day. And of course now the question is how do we want to choose x1 and x2 to maximize the profit? So how many keyboards and how many mice do we want to produce? We can model this as a geometrical problem. If you're also listening to computational geometry and this might look familiar to you. So we have these linear constraints and each constraint tells us how many of each type can we produce. We can produce at most 60 mice per day, at most 150 in total and whatever that is. So what we can do is we can take a coordinate system and on the x-axis we put x1 and on the y-axis we want to put x2. And now every point here basically tells us how many of each do we produce. So if I put a point here then that tells me we produce zero mice and zero keyboards. If I put a point let's say here then this tells us we produce 100 mice and about 55 keyboards. And I want to find out which points are valid, so what can we do? And this is what the constraints tell us. So the constraint C tells us at most 60 miles. So we cannot reach any of these points here. The only points that are valid are inside this half plane. Everything that lies at x2 equals 60 or below. And also this constraint, we can have at most 150 in total, so all the points that are valid have to lie in this half plane, below this diagonal. The same way this gives us a half plane. And also we cannot produce negative amount of something, so both of those have to be at least zero. And that gives us all the valid solutions which lie in this polygon. And it's basically in the intersection of all these half planes and the two half planes above x1 equals 0 and to the right of x2 equals 0. And every point in here gives us the weathered solution. Everything what we put here, this point that we can do. We can do 120 keyboards and 15 mice. But which of those solutions do we want to pick? And that's where this target function that we got comes into play. The target function tells us we get 30 euro for every keyboard and 50 euro for every mouse. So this is some function that we want to maximize. And if we place it here, it's basically a vector. It's some cost vector, 30 times x1 plus 50 times x2. It's exactly this vector here. So basically we want to maximize the vec this vector within this space. And to do that, we can take the orthogonal of this. This is the profit line. If we look at all the points that lie on this line, all those points give us a profit of 1,500 euros. 
if we move this line along this target function vector, the profit will increase. So if you're here on this segment, all the points here give us a profit of 3,000 euros. All the points here, 4,500. And now we keep moving this line until we get to some extreme point. If we get here and we move it even further, then we don't have a valid solution anymore. And this gives us the maximum profit. And now can you compute the coordinate of this point? Well, it lies on the boundary of the pink half plane, which corresponds to this, and on the boundary of the blue half plane, which corresponds to this constraint. So it has to lie in the intersection of the two lines that we get by these inequalities if you put an equals here. So x1 plus x2 equals 150, and for x1 plus 11, x2 equals 880. And I already did that for you. That's at 110x1 and 40x2. And what's the profit of this point? We just take the point and plug it into the target function. So we get 30 times 110 plus 50 times 40, and then we get 5,300 euros. So here the solution is 5,300. And you get it by producing 110 keyboards and 40 mice per day. And how could we formally describe what we did here? We have some constraints. We have these linear constraints. And each of these constraints here, how can we describe that? I mean, we have our products x1 and x2, and each of them kind of tells us how many of x1 plus how many of x2 plus how many of three, x3 and so on we can compute per day. So each of these is some inequality where on the left side we have some quantity times each of the products and on the right side it tells us at most that many of the sum we can produce. And that we could write down as a matrix. So we have some matrix A that's our constraint matrix, and we have our targets B. And if we multiply this matrix A with X, then th this is at most B. In this example, our matrix here would have in the first row 4, 11, in the second 1, 1, in the third 0, 1. And B would be a vector that has 880, 150, and 60. And then we always want that whatever we produce is not negative, so we have the additional constraints x greater or equals zero. And our target function, that's similar, we want to multiply some value times x1 plus some value times x2 and so on, so we want to multiply some vector with x. And here we want to maximize the target function that's defined by our vector c times x. Here the vector c would be 30 and 50, or this vector 30, 50, times the vector x1, x2. And the solution we want to find is the maximum value of the target function under those constraints. So it is the maximum of our vector c times x under the constraints ax is at most b and x is at least 0.